since you can't go out sightseeing, here's Mount Rushmore with Washington, Jefferson, McDaniel, and Abraham Lincoln. And now, let's get those answers done, huh? So this is the second of your log and exponent practice test. Problem one this time is uh, five parts, not six. And you have to give the inverse function. So the inverse of e to the x? Anybody? Kayla, natural log of x. You write natural log without the x on it. I'm going to mark a point off. Even though the button on your calculator says natural log and it doesn't have x on it, it's a function of x. So you got to have natural log of x. Have the notation correct. Here's log to the base 7 of x. The inverse is Yulska, 7 to the x. Very good. f of x equals natural log of x. That's a, on one of your calculator buttons. The inverse is e to the x. And you have to ask the class for that one. The answer's on your face of your calculator. 5 to the x, we did this in class. There's a small selection of functions that are their own inverse. 5 over x is one of them. Or you could take the original function and rewrite it as x equals 5 over y, cross multiply, xy equals 5, and then y equals 5 over x, which is the inverse function, because we switched x and y, solved for y. Well, that's 5 over x. So you can always solve it the long way. That's how to solve it the long way if you forget. All right, last one, 10 to the x. That's on your calculator. The inverse of that is log to the base 10 of x. All right, I hope you can see all those. Got all the way to the edge of the chalkboard. Now we have to solve 5 to the x equals 10. So you take the log of each side. Doesn't matter if you use log to the base 10 or log to the base e. Let's use regular log. So this becomes log of 5 to the x equals log of 10. And log of 10 happens to be 1. So I now have x log 5 equals 1. Hmm, you can see that. That's good. So x is equal to 1 over log 5. That's an exact answer. That's a fine answer. All right. This guy here, you have to graph log of x plus 2. So go ahead and do it on your calculator. Here's what I'm looking for. You have to write down what you see. There's going to be a vertical asymptote, a borderline. You don't have to draw it, but the, you can't cross that. The, the function doesn't exist there. Now, when x is negative 1, I have log of 1, which is 0. When x is 0, I have log of 2, which is a small positive number. So the curve looks like that. If you can draw that, yay, you get it right. So, whether you have that dotted line, not worried about it, but if you draw past, in this case, that's negative 2. If you draw past that negative 2 with your curve, you've made a mistake because you've made it look as if the log can exist there when x is like negative 3 or negative 2.7, and the function does not exist for that sort of thing. All right. A few more problems to go, and this video is done. Hope you're crushing it. All right, next problem was uh, 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 PERT for a 5%. Uh, no, graph y equals e to the 2. So number 4. y equals e to the 2x. That's an easy graph. It looks like this. Goes through at 1. There's nothing else to draw. It doesn't have any other personality. Number 5. Uh, PERT for 5%. We didn't give any principles, so you have to write P e to the 0.05 t. That's where the interest rate goes as a decimal. And that's that's all you have to write. Number six. If they gave a starting amount, like $100 or something, that would go in that parking spot. Number six, they wanted, uh, oh, we're supposed to skip it, sorry. Skip that. That's from another um, chapter. I don't know how it snuck in there. It's from an old file. Um, if you wanted to graph it, it's going to look like this. It's going to have a vertical asymptote there, vertical asymptote there, that's going to be a uh, uh, U-shape going down then like this, but don't worry about it. Number seven. Number seven was $1,000 at 3% for 10 years, so you want 1,000 times 1.03 to the 10. Let's see how that comes out. So we're using an exponential function to do the, uh, the repeated 3% interest. 
And that times a thousand is going to be one three four three point nine two. So after ten years at three percent, you gain three hundred forty-four dollars. Fruits is just sit there. That's what you get. Number eight. The question was, uh, how long will it take for this thing to go, uh, the bacteria to go until you get ten thousand? So you have ten thousand equals 50, your starting amount of bacteria, and you have E to the 0.12T. Now that 0.12 is the growth rate. That's a pretty good growth rate. Slow for a bacteria, but it'd be, a, it'd be fast if it was money. But uh, anyway, so how do you solve this thing? Well, divide by 50. Fifty into ten thousand, you can knock off a five, and you have a thousand divided by five. A thousand divided by five is two thousand, or two hundred. Sorry, two hundred. Two hundred divided. Uh, two hundred times five is a thousand. So now you have two hundred. E to the point two. Two hundred is equal to e to the point one two t. So you take the natural log of both of these dudes, because that's how you get rid of e. The natural log of 200 can be done on a calculator, and it's equal to 0.12t, because these two functions undo each other. Now, to find t, you do natural log of 200 divided by 0.12. That's what t is equal to. So, let's do it on the calculator. I hope you've already done it. You should match this. Natural log of 200 divided by 0.12 comes out to be 44.153. So the original question was, how long will it take? I don't know, it's hours, days, whatever the time unit is. 44 of those time units. <laughs> I don't have the actual question for me. I just have the answer. All right, I think we're, I think we're almost done. That was problem eight. I have just nine and 10 to do. So here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Any questions? Oh, oh, okay. Carly has a question. What is your question? Ah, well, yeah. You get to use your calculator, of course. And um, I can't, I can't stop you from using your book or your notes because you're right there at home. But it's going to be timed. You're going to start at 3:05 and go to 4:20, and that's on Thursday. So. Good luck with that. I hope you're uh, ready to crush it on Thursday. Problem nine. Problem nine is uh, we have to do log of the log of 10 to the 100. Okay? Log of 10 to the 100 is just 100. So now I have to do the log of 100. Log of 100 is 2. The power I would put on 10 to get 100 is 2. There's another part for this one. It's log to the base 7 of 16807. Now I wonder if 16807 is a power of 7. So I'm going to do 16807 divided by 7. And I'm going to divide it by 7 again. And it turns out that that 16807 is equal to 7 to the 5th power. I found that out by just doing 7 times 7 times 7 times 7 times 7 times 7 on my calculator, and I match that 16807. So I'm getting this one directly. I'm getting exactly 5. Now, if you know your change of base rule, which is one of the formulas, change of base rule would be log of 16807 divided by log of 7, and that should give you 5 when you do it. That's change of base law, one of the last rules that's in the... Uh, in chapter 5. They save it for the very end. But it's an interesting rule because that's why we only have two log buttons on our calculator. There is a place in the catalog where you can get, um, you can enter the log. If you use catalog, there's a place where you can get log and enter the base. You can enter a base. They'll, they'll prompt you for a number for that spot. But change of log, change of base uh, rule handles, gives you a way to handle any base of logarithm. Last problem, we have to graph y equals e to the point oh three t now that's a three percent growth rate and the base is bigger than one so it's going to go like this it's going to go through at one it's just going to be this exponential curve 
and it's going to grow kind of slowly, so don't draw it too steep, you know, because it's only 3%. Okay, you guys, uh, I'd be glad to do a, a uh, an email conversation or a phone conversation. My home phone number, 868-6788. Um, anything you're stuck with, I'd be glad to, to deal with you. But what might be the best is if you have a question, leave it as a comment, and then I can answer it where everybody can see it. Because if you have a question, six other people have the same question. And then there's two other people who haven't even thought of that question. But when they hear your question, they would say, now that's a good question. I would like to have that answered. Okay, so study up. Do these problems. Crush the test on Thursday, please. All right.